Hey guys, how you doing? Chad again. Thanks for stopping over. Uh, first of all, big shout out to everybody that's been subscribing. Appreciate it. Uh, I did these videos more or less just to kind of get out there a little bit and get the name out there and show some of the knives that I've been making lately. Um, never really thought about a subscriber base or anything like that until I started watching some other videos and doing some side chats with some people. And uh, so I appreciate you guys that have already jumped and subscribed. I think I'm around 40 some uh, subscribers right now. That's awesome. And my kids always get on there. My daughter, she checks on there. She's like, hey, Dad, you have, you know, I remember, Dad, you have 21 subscribers. Or, Dad, you have 32 subscribers. So she gives me this little input all the time. So it's kind of neat. Um, her and I did a little video a little while back. Uh, thank you to Jeremy and then also uh, showing the rabbitry and the chickens and stuff like that. So you can jump over there and see that. Uh, also, I want to put a, a, a little shout out or a plug in for this knife that I made. Uh, for the National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Fund. If you haven't heard about it or seen it, jump into my videos. There's an actual video specifically for that knife. It shows everything that I built, um, why I built it, a little bit background on me, and, um, and what it's for. Um, but just a brief snippet, you can jump over on cknifeandtool.com and you can read a little bit about it as well and see all the photos. And it's a knife that I made in my traditional style of bushcraft hunting knives but I put a law enforcement spin on it. And I wanted to do that to get a raffle going to raise money for the National Law Enforcement Memorial Fund. Now their link is also down below here and you can jump over there and see exactly what it is they do and why they do it, who they are and so on. But by the time this video is out there's probably about a month left of the raffle. The raffle is May 1st of 2017. And May 1st 2017 I'll do a video releasing both the winner and how much money was raised and uh, a big kudos and shout out to everybody that supported it not only my channel but the actual knife itself uh, so get over there take a look at it uh, there's a list of how much raffle chances cost and everything it's all it's all there so without further ado let's get to Kurt's knife now Kurt is a repeat customer repeat customers are cool but like I said previously I think in another video is um, I might have mentioned it that all of my customers are friends at some point in time. It's either somebody I met throughout the period of time and became a friend, bought a knife, or it's somebody that said, hey, I'd like to buy a knife. And going through the knife process, these, you know, it's not just very cold and generic, hey, I like that knife, buy it and be done. So far, every single knife I've made, ex excluding two now, a neck knife and a, a production knife, those were both I was going to build for myself, but I'm selling them. Every knife I've made was specifically for a customer. So getting into that, it was almost, uh, you know, you get to learn the personality of the person and, and um, their, the pros and cons to things and what they're looking at. So having them come out to the shop and pick out wood and go through stuff and get the feel is really cool. I had a customer come out and shape his, his scales to his hand. He had specific issues with his hand and he wanted to make sure the knife kind of fit him. Well, if you're in the area, I welcome that. So he came on out and he worked on his knife a little bit, got the scales where he wanted them, and I'm going to finish it up for him. Uh, so I've been able to do that kind of thing. So it was cool. So I like to think of all the customers as friends. Even if you, you might buy one off the internet, you know, off my website or something, the couple that I might have there, you know, you got questions or something, give me a, give me a shout, and we can either call or we can, you know, FaceTime or something like that. I'm all open to that kind of thing. So you can look at things a little bit differently. Uh, so anyhow, so Kurt was a repeat customer, and so he commissioned me to build a kitchen knife. Now, I did a series on this because I'd never used 154CM. It's a stainless steel. I do D2, but I fell back to my knife mentor, and I uh, got to talking to him, and he's, yeah, he's, no problem, I can do it. So I did it, and it worked out great, and I was really happy with the whole turnout of it. I had, this was my first kitchen knife, so it's it basically a freehand design. But Kurt just wanted uh, a couple of little criteria. One was it had to be stainless steel because he'll leave it on his boat when he goes fishing out in the Pacific and for halibut and salmon and whatnot. So one, it had to be stainless steel. Two, no woods. He wanted it micarta or some type of G10. So he did that kind of thing. And three, he wanted to keep it simple. He didn't want to get really extravagant with it. So we, may, we managed to stay in that route. So what I did is I built him the knife. It's going to be 13. It is 13 inches overall length. It's two inches tall, and it has an eight and a half inch cutting edge, a belly. And here it is. Now he didn't need a, a, a sheath like a carrying sheath. He just needed something to store it in. So I just made him this. 
I put holes in here simply because of what it's going to be used for. I wanted to make sure that if you put it in here before cleaning it uh, and there was some debris or something inside it, it was able to be cleaned out a lot easier. So I thought the holes would do that justice. Plus, putting it away and doing stuff, having the holes would help the air pass through and everything would dry faster too. I'm not concerned about the the rust factor, I'm just concerned about the cleaning, the cleanliness, I guess. But anyhow, like all knives, whether you're going to wear it or not, they got to pass the pa uh, the shake test, right guys? So there it is there. I uh, left a little tip on here, left a little bit of a lip here, just so you can grab your thumb, push that on there like that. So hopefully you guys are going to see that okay. You just push that on there. You can push, pull it out if you wanted, but it's nice just to have a little bit of a thumb right there, just to be able to push. So push this out. Now, if there's, sorry if there's fingerprints and stuff on this. I, I didn't really, been showing it off to a few people, so I haven't had the chance to really uh, clean it, clean it. Uh, but, uh, so hopefully this will come out good on the video, because what I did is I kept my tapered tang design, and I thought that would really look nice. So hopefully this is going to come out okay, and you guys will see that on the video here. This is my fourth take. And uh, I really don't like the idea of not having a camera with a screen that I can see things. So uh, it's hard to do it just on a camera like this. So, but I did the taper tang, and here's his uh, his scales, and it's olive drab and black layered scales with nickel silver decorative pins, and again the the G10 uh, dark red liners. Now, before in the, in the video, I think you guys might have seen that this part right down here was a little bit more swooping this way. And the reason why I ended up taking some of that out is because of the fact that this is going to be a knife on a boat. There's probably a really good chance that you're going to end up wearing gloves because of the fact that where he's at, it still can get chilly quite a bit, often than not. So what I wanted to do is make sure that when he had, when he had gloves on, this part right here, excuse me, this part right here was actually snagging on. I did some of those uh, uh, stretchy gloves that have the, um, the non-slip palms and the fingers are like dipped, you know, you can buy a pack of 20 of them. Um, I put a pair of those on because they're still fairly tight, but, you know, good for what guys, have, I've seen guys using boats. And I put that on, it would snag right here a little bit. And I didn't think that would be a really good idea. So I trimmed that back just a little bit to give it more give it more shape. I still wanted to keep that look because I thought with the if you notice the shoulders of the of the of the scales right here matching the back part of the knife that I wanted to keep that look and everything and I wanted to keep some of these curves and such like that but and also I wanted to keep it in a practical sense. So so that's the so that's the knife, you know, hopefully like I said, hopefully this is going to come out okay and uh, you know, you guys are going to be able to focus in on on stuff like the tang and everything, so maybe that'll help. But yeah, so that's it. You know, it was like I said, 13 inches overall length, uh, two inches wide, and it was made out of um, uh, three sixteenths um, or three thirty seconds steel. Uh, there's six steel. Let me hold on. There you go. <laughs> Here's the 3 16 that's what it started out like, for you guys that haven't uh, seen the other build videos yet. Uh, so yeah, so jump over and um, go check out the other build videos, uh, it's three or four part series. I don't know if it's going to be four parts or not because I haven't finished editing everything. I had to do this video real quick, like I said, because Kurt's coming this weekend to pick the knife up, so I had to do this video and still finish those. So um, anyhow, that's it. And oh, real quick, if you guys, you know... I'm new at all this YouTube stuff, as well as, you know, the cameras and everything. Is there a camera that has a flip-back screen, you know, the kind that can flip out? Is there a camera that's fairly inexpensive that you might think is decent quality um, that I could put on here? Because, like I said, it's, it's nice to be able to see the screen while you're videoing. So this way you can see, you know, if you're lined up, because it's really hard to get everything sorted out with that. When you're sitting back here, I could do it and not move the camera, and I could be on on screen and it's easy but when you try to do close-ups I, I have a tendency of not being able to do a good job with that so anyhow I'll take some shots of this as well and we'll kind of like throw these in here and uh, so you guys can get a good picture of it but um, otherwise uh, 
jump over on those sites I told you about, check out the photos, the full photos of this, check out the Law Enforcement Memorial Knife, and uh, again, like, subscribe, comment, YouTube likes it, I like it, I like it because it doesn't leave me at the bottom of the YouTube bucket in, in this great vast land called YouTube here, um, and you know, it gets the name out a little bit, so I uh, appreciate all of that, so any help, any comments, anything, leave them down below. Again, thanks guys, I appreciate you stopping over. Thank you for your patience and understanding to my growing pains. And uh, we'll catch you again in the next video. Bye.